Audiobook Academy Biography Presents. Harper Lee. In addition to her Pulitzer Prize winning novels To Kill a Mockingbird and Go Set a Watchman, Harper Lee is also acclaimed for her short stories. To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee's Pulitzer Prize winning novel, was completed in 1959. Soon after, she helped Truman Capote, a fellow writer and friend, write an essay for The New Yorker that would eventually become his non fiction masterpiece, In Cold Blood. Capote's friendship with her continued to grow. Before To Kill a Mockingbird, Lee penned the novel Ghost at a Watchman, which depicts the later lives of the characters from her Pulitzer Prize winning novel, which was published in July 2015. Early Years Monroeville, Alabama, is the town where Lee was born on April 28, 1926. Growing up in a tiny town as the youngest of four kids, she developed into a tomboy. Her father was a lawyer who also owned a portion of the local newspaper and was a member of the Alabama state government. Lee's mother suffered from mental illness for most of her life and rarely left the house. It's possible she had bipolar disorder, according to the theory. Education. Lee became interested in English literature in high school. She attended Huntington College in Montgomery, Alabama, after graduating from high school in 1944. Unlike her peers, Lee had no interest in fashion, makeup, or relationships. Instead, she devoted her time to academics and writing. Lee was a part of the Glee Club and the Literary Honors Society. Lee was a loner and an individualist before transferring to the University of Alabama at Tuscaloosa. At the university, she made a bigger effort to socialize by joining a sorority. Lee worked on the school newspaper and the Rammer Jammer, the school's satirical magazine, before becoming editor of both publications. Lee was accepted to the university's law school in her junior year, which allowed students to work toward their legal degrees while remaining in their undergraduate years. She had to resign from her position as Rammer Jammer editor due to the obligations of her law school. When Lee was in her first year of law school, she began telling her family that she wanted to be a writer instead of a lawyer. That summer, she was an exchange student at Oxford University in England. Lee dropped out of law school in the first semester of her second year. She was soon on her way to the North, where she hoped to pursue a career as a writer. Early Writing Profession Lee, at 23, landed in New York City in 1949. She worked as a ticket agent for Eastern Airlines and the British Overseas Air Corporation for a number of years before finally getting her foot in the door, BOAC. Lee struck up a friendship with Michael Martin Brown, a Broadway composer and lyricist, and his wife Joy while in New York City. The Browns surprised Lee with a generous Christmas gift in 1956, a year of financial assistance so she could devote herself full-time to her writing career. She gave up her day job to focus solely on her art. Her agent, Maurice Crane, was introduced to her by the Browns. As a result, J.B. Lippincott Company, a publisher, became interested in her work. Lee wrote To Kill a Mockingbird while working with editor Teho Huff on a manuscript set in a small Alabama town. Truman Capote Truman Capote was one of Lee's closest boyhood buddies, then known as Truman Persons. In many ways, Lee was Truman's childhood protector since he was stronger than the other guys. Truman who had few common interests with the other boys his age, was teased for being overly sentimental and for dressing up in ritzy clothes. Despite the fact that the two pals couldn't be more dissimilar, they had a rough upbringing. After being mostly abandoned by his own parents, Truman was staying with his mother's family in town. When Lee visited New York City in the 1950s, she ran into Capote, an up-and-coming literary celebrity at the time, again. In 1956, Lee and Capote collaborated on an article for The New Yorker that Capote was working on. Capote was writing about the effect of the Clutter family's murders on their little Kansas farming town, which Capote had witnessed firsthand. The two went to Kansas to interview locals, friends and family of the dead, and investigators working on the case. He used Lee as a research assistant and she helped him conduct interviews, winning over some of the locals with her laid-back and unpretentious demeanor. First impressions were mixed for Truman because of his flamboyant demeanor and flair. Richard Hickok and Perry Smith, two of the Clutter's suspected murders, were arrested in Las Vegas and brought back to Kansas for questioning during their time in Kansas. In January 1960, Lee and Capote had the opportunity to interrogate the suspects. Lee and Capote were back in New York after a few days. In the meantime, she was working on her first novel's galleys and he was working on In Cold Blood, a non-fiction masterpiece. The murder trial was held in Kansas. In addition to Lee's notes on the incident, Lee provided Capote with information on the victims, the killers, the surrounding community, and much more. In Cold Blood, Lee collaborated with Capote intermittently. Although she had been invited to watch the executions of Smith and Hickok in 1965, she turned it down. 
There was a gap between Capote and Stein for some time after his book was published in 1966. To Lee and Jack Dunphy, his long-term partner, Capote dedicated the book without acknowledging her involvement in its creation. Lee was devastated by Capote's treachery, but she stayed friends with him for the remainder of his life despite her feelings of rage and her books. To Kill a Mockingbird, 1960, and Go Set a Watchman, 1963, were Lee's only published works, 2015. Capote's best-known book, In Cold Blood, was also a collaboration between her and Capote, 1966. To Kill a Mockingbird Book of the Month Club and Literary Guild picked up To Kill a Mockingbird in July 1960. Reader's Digest magazine published a shortened version of the story. Pulitzer Prize and other literary honors followed the novel's release the following year. It has been translated into more than 40 languages and sold more than a million copies per year, making To Kill a Mockingbird an American classic. Scout, the protagonist of the novel, was a young girl who resembled Lee as a child. Scout, her brother Jem, and their friend Dill become fascinated with a strange and rather infamous local figure dubbed Boo Radley in one of the book's primary plot lines. The book was more than just a coming-of-age tale, it also dealt with the South's long-standing problems with racism. A black man accused of raping a white woman in a tiny town is aided by their legal father, Atticus Finch, who seeks to secure him a fair trial and prevent him from being hung. Go Set a Watchman Go Set a Watchman, Lee's second book, was released in July of this year. In essence, the tale was an early draft of To Kill a Mockingbird, and it focused on the characters' subsequent lives. In 1957, a manuscript for Go Set a Watchman was sent out to publishers. In the event that Lee's novel was not accepted, her editor requested her to change the tale and make Scout a child. To Kill a Mockingbird was written by the author after two years of work. Tanya Carter, Lee's lawyer, found Go Set a Watchman, which had been presumed lost, in a safe deposit box. HarperCollins stated in February 2015 that the text would be published on July 14, 2015. Mockingbird Scout, in Go Set a Watchman is a 26-year-old lady returning from New York City to Macomb, Alabama. He is shown in To Kill a Mockingbird as a racist with racist attitudes and connections to the Ku Klux Klan, Scout's father Atticus. Do you want Negroes by the carload in our schools and churches and theaters? Atticus asks Scout and Watchman. What's your say on their coming to live here? Fan reaction to the novel's contentious subject matter and stunning depiction of one of their favorite characters spurred arguments among literary scholars and students. Harper Collins' pre-sale numbers for Lee's second book were similarly record-breaking. Concerns arose regarding whether Lee's declining health had anything to do with his decision to publish. Statement, I'm alive and delighted as hell with the reception to Watchmen, Lee said through Carter. The message was delivered, but it didn't put an end to all of the queries, her sister Alice wrote in a letter to Lee's family in 2011 that Lee would sign anything put before her by anyone in whom she has faith. Others who had met Lee, on the other hand said that she was the driving force behind the decision to publish the article. There was no indication of coercion, according to the Alabama officials that looked into the matter. Film Adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird For the 1962 film adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird, playwright Horton Foote used the same title he used for his screenplay. Lee was a frequent visitor to the set when the movie was being shot, and he gave numerous interviews in support of the production. Gregory Peck's performance of Atticus Finch in the film adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird earned him three Academy Award nominations and one win, including Best Actor. Lee's father is thought to have inspired the creation of the character. Later in life, Lee is said to have worked on another novel in the mid-1960s, but it was never published. When Lee's hand was badly burned in 1966, she underwent surgery to correct the damage. In addition, she agreed to serve on the National Council of the Arts at President Johnson's request. Lee went into hiding during the 1970s and 1980s. The Reverend, the working title of Lee's factual book on an Alabama serial killer, took up some of her free time. However, no one ever saw the light of day on this piece. While living in both New York City and her birthplace of Monroeville, Lee maintained a low-key, private existence. The author referred to her sister Alice Lee as Atticus in a skirt while she resided in Monroeville with her older sister. Her sister was a trusted advisor who handled many of the author's legal and financial responsibilities. As a well-known member of her church and community, Lee gained notoriety for her efforts to escape the limelight. Many of her charity offerings were made anonymously because of the wealth she had accrued as a result of her accomplishment. For her great contribution to America's literary history, President George W. Bush awarded Lee the Presidential Medal of Freedom in a White House ceremony in November 2007. During a conversation with Lee's sister Alice, Alice commented, books are all she cares about. 
Lee was able to read despite her disabilities because of the magnifying apparatus she needed due to her macular degeneration. The e-publishing agreement and the lawsuits. A federal complaint was launched against Samuel Pincus by Lee in May of this year. When it came to To Kill a Mockingbird's copyright, Lee claimed that Pincus engaged in a conspiracy to mislead her and diverted profits from the book as a result. The lawsuit was settled in September of 2013 for an undisclosed sum. Monroe County Heritage Museum in Monroeville, Georgia, was later sued by Lee's legal team because they were selling illegal products based on To Kill a Mockingbird. A federal judge dropped the case in February 2014 after the authors and the museum's attorneys filed a combined motion to stop the lawsuit. A digital edition of Lee's classic was made available in the same year. HarperCollins agreed to publish To Kill a Mockingbird as an ebook and digital audiobook after she signed a contract with the publisher. According to a press release from the publisher, Lee stated, I'm still old-fashioned. Bookshelves and antique libraries are my favorite places to spend time. That Mockingbird has been around for so long has left me speechless and awed. For a new generation, Mockingbird has arrived. Death. 89-year-old Lee died on February 19, 2016. Hank Connor, the author's nephew, claimed she died peacefully in her sleep. As a result of a stroke in 2007, Lee experienced hearing loss, reduced eyesight, and difficulties with her short-term memory. Lee relocated to an assisted living facility in Monroeville after suffering a stroke. Aaron Sorkin was hired by producer Scott Rudin to write a stage version of To Kill a Mockingbird around Lee's death in 2016. Lee's estate filed a complaint against Sorkin's version in March of last year, six months before the show was slated to open on Broadway. Critics were divided about the play's depiction of Finch, who was shown as more sympathetic to the oppressive racial sentiments of the era, rather than as a heroic crusader like the novel's protagonist. However, Rudin argued that he had the freedom to adapt the characters to the present day, and that he had done so. I can't and won't put on a play that feels like it was written in a year when the book was published in terms of its racial politics, it wouldn't be of interest, he remarked. Since then, the world has changed. From a man who drinks, carries a gun, and curses softly, Atticus Finch's portrayal was apparently softened. In December of this year, the show opened on Broadway. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this, see you in next video.